folks, Jen or Murgriffin here, coming at you today with a look at the Evic from Joytech. Um, I purchased this from OvaliUSA.com. Um, I'm sure there will be other vendors carrying it. Um, it is a variable wattage, variable power device. You can pick which one you prefer. Um, it has a rather extensive menuing system and set of features, which we will get into and a nice little uh, control ring interface. There goes someone texting me when I'm trying to do a video. Probably slip. Yep. Um, and uh, most important of all, this is pretty much the first device that we've had access to as consumers that allows us to upgrade the firmware ourselves. Um, I mean, Probeape came out. Probeape came out with a new uh, firmware and operating uh, upgrade for the Probeape, but we had to send it back to them. Um, the Darwin has the same thing. It's had various iterations of its circuit board, its software, but we haven't been able to do that upgrade. Um, this one lets it do the upgrade itself, and I'll talk about it more when we get to the program that uh, for Windows that lets you interact with the device. Um, if I had done this review when I had version 1.0 of the firmware, I would have given it a solid thumbs down for being stupid. Um, and that while it said it could do variable wattage, you kind of had to set it, do a manual atomizer check, and then it was just like, it would do the math for you once and set the voltage to match the wattage you put in. And then if you changed it, it wouldn't do what the Darwin does, which is stay at that wattage no matter what the atomizer is. Um, version 1.1 got rid of that problem, so it's actually now a functional, useful device. Um, and they claim that version 2.0 of the firmware is on the way. So um, let's take a deep dive, look, comes, look at what comes in the box, look at the mod itself, look at the menu features, and we'll take a look at the software for Windows that lets you interact with the device. So let's take a look at what comes with the EVIC. And I apologize for the focus here. Apparently it's time for a new camera, because at distance, it doesn't seem to be real clear. Um, nice little presentation style box. It's O'Valley and Evic all over it. Open it up. Now, obviously, the mod had a plastic wrapper around it and a little screen protector thing, but you know, I've been using it for a week, so uh, we'll take a closer look at the mod itself later. We take this out, and you get an actually fairly complete little manual. Um, it shows, you know, screen captures um, of all the modes and menu settings and charging options and how to set the date and how to set the puff count. Oh, yay. And the temperature alarm and even how to go get and install the program that we'll take a look at. In the box, there's three other boxes. One holds the battery that you insert. One holds the... Uh, USB wall adapter, which says O'Valley and has a charge light on it and a standard USB port. And then in the other box is the USB to micro USB cable. And uh, we'll look at the battery that's inside it. All right, let's take a close up. It is sort of a matte, shiny finish, O'Valley Evic. There's the uh, power or enter button. And on the other side, the little plastic uh, cover over the micro USB adapter. Always hard to get those out, even when you have fingernails. So there's the micro USB. And that cover sits pretty flush and unnoticeable. Hopefully I won't rip it off. Um, a nice strip well. 510 connection. I love that it's not a finger magnet. Now, this is a little hard to unscrew. But... Technically, since you can charge it through the USB, you would only have to take that battery out if it failed or it needed to be replaced. It's in Samsung 2600 milliamp hour ICR, not IMR, um, 18650, which is a cobalt instead of manganese chemistry, but roughly has the same properties as an IMR. It's considered, quote unquote, safer. And there's some protections built into the circuitry. The, the spring's a little flimsy. It's got the O'Valley logo and a vent hole. And as I said, 
not the easiest threads to screw, but you know, since I got it, I haven't opened this since till I did this video, so it doesn't need to be done frequently. You can also unscrew the entire control head, which is sealed and enclosed, has a positive connector and then the 510 connector on the other side, and then just fits on top of the battery tube. So um, this is for people, there is a stainless steel bottom uh, tube rather than the aluminum that this is. So you could put a different control head or a different bottom sleeve on. Now, most of its function is in the menu system. Now this is the firmware version 1.1. Uh, frankly, 1.0 was useless and disappointing. So to the right goes up and to the left goes down, which I always get wrong. So turn it off, you get the Joytech logo, it goes to sleep. Click the button a bunch of times while it's not firing. Hit enter on power on and it will come back up. Show you the time and the date. And then it would normally, normally do an atomizer check, but I don't have one on. Um, I have it in variable wattage mode at the moment. So when you click a new atomizer or cartomizer on there, it does an automatic detection of the resistance, so 1.7. You can also go into the menu and do a manual check. You can set when it's going to sleep. Say so atomizer detecting. Those are your puff count um, and your puff limit, and then your battery 100% charge kind of thing. And when you turn the wheel left, it goes down, right, it goes up. And for wattage, it does it in 0.1 increments, which most of the other devices don't do. Now, you go into vapor set, and I'm not sure why battery is here, um, but you basically have to tell it whether you have a 2600 milliamp hour or 25. We go to switch is where you choose between variable wattage and variable voltage. So, and then exit to get out of the menu. Um, standby shows when the screen kind of goes to sleep and when the system itself goes to sleep. This is one of my annoyo points because I have it set to 30 minutes, which is the longest it allows you. And you know, if I'm using more than one device, I may not pick up this one for 30 minutes and then I got to turn it back on. Um, puff counter, who cares? Um, atomizer resistance does the same thing it does automatically. Um, temperature it tells you tells you what the current temperature of the the battery unit is, and then you can set at what it alarms at. I have this way high that it's not likely to ever get to, except an extreme emergency, because otherwise it was going off. User info you can set your name in a little program I'll show you, and the serial number of the unit. And lastly, the version of the firmware. One point always trash. 1.1 is actually usable. Maybe 2.0 will be even awesome. So, because we reset it, it dropped, uh, the voltage was low, so um, now you can see the, the V instead of the W there. Now it does um, count how many seconds you hold the button down, which I don't really care about, but it shows it anyway. And it does have a cutoff, so here we go. 10 seconds, boom, no more vape for you. Now on to the software application, which you can download from joytech.com. You can also download firmware upgrades, which if you have 1.0, I suggest you do. First thing I'm going to do is click on get user data and it will find it and read the number of puff records. Woo hoo. In from there. Um, next, we're going to take a look at user information and it's here. You'll notice there's no name up there on welcome. So I'm going to type in my name. I am not telling it my age. And then I'm going to click Modify, and it will send that information to the device. And now, as you can see up on the top, it says, Welcome to me. Under the current status, software version 1.1, serial number, puff is zero, so I don't have a limit. Why you would want to limit the number of puffs you have, I have no clue. Um, current voltage, current battery, la la. Um, and then it has what are fairly useless statistics since I pretty much know what I vape at and it doesn't change a whole lot, but you can go voltage, puffs, resistance, um, by month, week, or day, 
I mean, pretty much the only thing that's varying is the number of puffs I take per day or whatever. We can look at the resistance. I've pretty much had similar tanks and 1.7 ohm resurrectors on it, so that makes sense. You can change what it is. And lastly, you can download the firmware, put it in the folder for the application, and it will transmit it to the device, and pretty much you have just updated your firmware. Now this only runs on Windows, which is annoying, so I have to run parallels or boot camp to pull it up. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of useful information, but it does have that very useful advantage of being able to change the firmware on the device. So that is the Joytech EVIC. Um, I've got to say, of the devices that have been coming out of China in the past couple of months that are now offering us access to cheaper variable wattage or variable power devices, uh, this is my favorite for a couple of reasons. Um, it's a unique design. It's not a clone of anything else. It has the most features and functions available. Um, its interface for going up and down in wattage or voltage um, is pretty nice. The menuing system is a little goofy going up and down, but um, it's easier for me to see what it is I'm selecting rather than knowing I need to hit five times to get to menu option seven. So it's a little more uh, visually interactive on the menu system. And finally, um, it's my favorite because I can plug it into my computer and update its software. Um, like I said at the top of the hour, the first version of the uh, firmware was just dumb. Um, and didn't really do what it what we expected it to do, which is what the other variable wattage devices do, including the Darwin and the Sigeli Z Max and the Vamo, is automatically detect whatever you change or re put on the device and then adjust to your shedded wattage and, and keep it the same. It was just sort of being a dumb calculator that would figure out what voltage to set it at for you once. Who came up with that? I don't know. But they're also saying that uh, Interface 2.0 is on the way, firmware 2.0, um, so that should be a great improvement. Um, it's a, st a pretty stylish looking device. Um, I'm not sure how durable that control ring is going to be. There seems to be, it's a little spring weighted, um, so that when you turn it in one direction, it, it pops back to the center. Um, and I have had it that if you screw the control head down on too tight, it doesn't want to work in one direction and you kind of have to back it off a little bit. Um, I have seen available in some other places um, a stainless steel tube for the bottom instead of the aluminum. Um, I do kind of like the fact that while it's chrome, um, it's not a fingerprint magnet. Hey, I like my vices to be clean and regulated. Um, the screen is really easy to read. Okay, it does have that puff function, and frankly, I'm just going to say I don't give a flying rat's tail how many puffs I've taken. Um, and the ability to limit, like you can only take 500 puffs and then it stops? Who came up with that? Um, the battery meter here doesn't seem to be wildly uh, accurate. It's just sort of a rough gauge. Um, it will tell you when the charge is complete right on the screen. It'll say charge complete um, when you have it plugged in, which is great. Um, so overall, um, this is my favorite of the new variable voltage, variable wattage devices. Only if you have firmware 1.1. Now the software that we showed you that interacts with it is Windows only. So if you're like me and you're on a Mac, you're going to have to run Parallels or VMware or you know something that lets you run Windows programs either in a, a virtual operating system or boot your Mac into Windows. Luckily, you don't have to use it all the time because I really don't want to see my puff statistics. Um, I just want to upload the firmware when there's a new version. Um, so for that, I can cope. But anyway, um, the Joytech EVIC. Um, I think it's really kind of a step in the right direction. Now, this is a little more expensive than some of the other ones. It's closer to the $100 or, you know, a couple bucks over range. 
um, but still significantly cheaper than um, a Darwin, um, which is the only variable voltage, variable wattage device we've sort of had to this point. Um, the other ones are cheaper, but they have less functionality and they don't have the ability to upgrade the firmware as we go along. So for me, those are enough advantages to pay you know, 40 to 50 bucks more than say of ammo or, you know, 20 to 30 bucks more than uh, Sigilli ZMAX. So that's my opinion and the evening is a winner.